Hi everyone, so today I'm going to show you how to take your Google Form game to the next level. First, I have my blank Google Form. Uh, so this is the default color of your Google Form. If you wanted to change the theme color, you would go up here to customize the theme color to whatever you'd like. Now, if you want to take your form to the next level, you can add a banner to your Google Form. Um, you would choose an image. You can use Google's pre-created banner. For example, maybe I want this one. Okay, and the banner will appear on top. Or you can create your own banner. So if you want to create your own banner, um, one way you can do it is to use Google Slides. So if I were to go on Google Slides, I would change this to a custom site. So to do that, I'm going to go to File, Page Setup. I'm going to choose Custom. And from here, I'm going to choose Pixels. So the size for Google Forms banner is 1600 by 400 pixel size. Okay, so then from there you can create your own image. I'm just gonna do one quickly, change the background color. I can insert image and then search the web. Maybe I'll, I will search for transparent frames. Choose one I like, insert that. Okay, so if I like my banner, I can go to File, Download, and then choose PNG. My image is downloaded here. I'm going to go back to my form. From here, I'm going to upload. And then I'm going to drag whatever is down here into my file. Here's my size. I'm going to click Done. And there is my custom banner. You will see that the color automatically changes, the theme color automatically changes. If you don't like that, you can go back and change it to whatever you like. Okay, so you can also change your font size. I changed my font size to playful. So next thing is response validation. If you don't know about response validation, it basically does not allow the respondent to move on to the next question if they don't have the right correct answer. So in order to do that, what you would do is you would go to change your question type to short answer and click on response validation. So in this case, you can use any uh, type you want. I usually like to use text and then it will be contains and the text would be my answer. The custom error text tells me or tells the user, uh, gives the user a hint. So I can say something like or whatever it is. Um, I like to use text whether it's just text or an expression like 3x minus 5 just because it's easy and I know that this it has to contain all these things. Once you make it required, the user cannot move on unless they have the correct answer. So if we were to test it out and I got my question wrong, it will say, did you use all caps? It won't allow me to move on or submit this form. But if I put in the correct answer, then I'm able to submit. Next thing you can do is you can 
have the form take the respondent to a section based on their answer. So how you do that is this works with multiple choice questions. So what you would do is you could change this to multiple choice and you can add your multiple choice options. Okay, once you do that, you down at the hamburger down here, you will click on go to section based on answer and you can have them continue to the next section. Let me add another section. This is section two. So you can have them continue to the next section or go to section two or whatever section you want them to go based on their answer. And I changed it to two options. You can also do the same with drop down. So if you were to click drop down, you can also have it take the responder to whatever section based on their answer. Okay, so I have it go to section two or section three. Okay, so now if I were to test it out, if I chose option one, this will take the responder to section two, and if I were to choose option two, I'll take the responder to section three based on their answer. So what if you want to quickly send response feedback to the responders? Um, what you would do is you would go to settings, go to quizzes and make this a quiz. So whether or not it is a quiz, if you want to be able to provide feedback to the responder, you can just make it a quiz. So you can choose one of these two options. It doesn't really matter which option you choose. They will still be able to see your feedback. So once I click save, okay, so to test it out, I'm going to go to preview, type in my email address. Okay, so I will answer this. So from your end as the teacher, you are able to go to individual response. Okay, that's the email address of this person that just responded, which is me. If you click on add individual feedback, now you could enter your feedback. And if you happen to have the app, the extension talk and comment here, you could enter your comment and record your comment and insert it into the feedback as well. And there would be your voice note. And you can save it. And now they are, it will send them an email that you left a feedback for them. Okay, so what if you want to collect data? And what if this is a form that you reuse over and over and you want to collect data in the same Google Sheet? but on different tabs. In order to do that, you would go to responses, click on the hamburgers on the top right. You're going to click on response destination. First create my new spreadsheet. I'm going to say demo responses. Okay, so now the spreadsheet is linked. If I were to view the spreadsheet, so I could click here and view the spreadsheet. Here is my timestamp and my responses. What if I want the responses to be collected in a different tab? All I would have to do is go back to my response destination keep note of the title of my spreadsheet. I'm gonna select existing spreadsheet and then find my spreadsheet. 
Okay, so once I have clicked on that same spreadsheet, I can check to see if a new tab has been created. So go to select response destination, and you will see down here that I have my first form or my first responses, and then I have my second responses. Uh, keep in mind that if you don't want the old response to transfer, make sure you delete your old responses. So if I delete all these responses, and again, select my response destination, okay, I, if I look, now I have my third response form and there's no dat data in here yet because there, there are no responses. I don't want to have to keep looking to see if I have gotten a new response. All I would do is click on the three uh, dots again and I'm going to click get email notifications for new responses. So now every time there's a new response, I will get an email telling me there's a new response. If I want to accept response or not accept response, I just close the top. And then I can also enter a message telling whoever is trying to view my, complete my form that I'm no longer accepting responses. Another thing I can do is I can have my form accept work or accept files. All I would do is click on the question type here, and then click on file upload. So now uh, my students can upload their work on here. So if I click continue, it will allow them to upload their work or upload their file. You can also allow only specific types of files. So for example, I can choose whatever file I only want to accept. Okay, to view that, all it does is ask them to add a file. Lastly, if I want a special message to pop up once the responder has submitted their form, all I would do is go up here to settings and under presentation, this is the confirmation message. So my confirmation message is your response has been recorded. So this is the default confirmation message. So if I want to do a confirmation message that is different, all I would have to do is change that. So this is good for digital escapes. So if you want a code to pop up um, to give to your students for digital escapes, this is what you would use. So you can say something like, and there you go. So if you were to check this out, okay, here it is. It tells me my code. Congratulations, your code is 511. And that's it. That's how to take your Google Forms game to the next level. Thank you for watching.